Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello of the 176th District in Monroe County. Pennsylvania has a massive problem that has been ignored way too long. Our roads and bridges are some of the oldest in the nation, and in many cases they're showing their age. This problem had been discussed and debated by the legislature for years, but a solution was finally reached in November. Joining me today to discuss the new plan to increase our safety on our highways, Secretary of the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, Barry Shook. Secretary, welcome to the program, and I'm honored to have you here. Um, I want to, if possible, if we can talk about um, what was happening about six years ago, especially in Monroe County, because you knew that we were on different sides of that issue, the tolling of I-80. We knew we had a problem six years ago, correct? This problem's been around for a long time, as you suggest, Representative. Uh, you know, we have one of the older infrastructures in the country, we own 40,000 miles of road, 25,000 bridges as a state. You and I, everybody watching this collectively own those. The average age of those bridges is 51 years, and that includes all the ones we've rebuilt, you know, all the new ones we've done. So you're right. I mean, Act 44 was uh, an attempt to look at a different finance uh, method, which was tolling Interstate 80 and gradually increasing tolls on the turnpike. Uh, the I-80 part was never approved, but the increase in the tolls on the turnpike did continue. Yeah. Um, but uh, we did not fully address it back at that time frame. So the, the issue, as you suggest in your directory comments, has just continued. And all along, the bridges kept getting older, the pavement kept getting older. So we knew it had a problem. They were getting weaker as they aged. And, and um, the, to me, anyway, you knew I, I was, we were on different sides of that issue. I knew that, look, we knew we needed monies to fix roads and bridges. However, tolling I-80 in Monroe County, with, in, our, in our particular case, and no matter how we, sw we played with it, I knew that our local roads would have been impacted because we jump on for one exit, get off mm -hmm. on another exit. And back then, if we had addressed the, the tax issue, it would have been like 16 cents. But delaying it six years, look at what it does. The infrastructure ain't getting any better. It gets worse, correct? And the bill gets higher. And I mean, the bill gets higher. I've, I've often likened it to a, uh, you have a credit card with a high balance, and when you don't make the minimum payment, uh, yeah. then the interest gets you every yeah. month. And so the issue we got here is that over time, every year you don't deal with it, the backlog got bigger, the price tag got bigger, and as you said, the longer you put it off, the more it costs. You know, um, in Monroe County, we're blessed with beautiful streams, and I tell people, those beautiful streams have bridges that go over them. We probably have more bridges than any other county. And they're all built about the same years. You know, they're all about yeah. this, and, 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 they're, and they're hurting. And so, of course, many of them were posted. I was getting calls from, I had a business up in uh, Barrett, um, Wild Brush. He says, I have a truck doing a 10-mile detour to get to me. Uh, you know, how do you anticipate, how do you plan to bring and attract business, attract trucking companies to Monroe County with all these posted bridges. And that's, you know, something that you and others in the legislature recognize is there's a cost to doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's twofold. One is there's a cost of that trucker that had to go a 10 mile detour. They built that cost into the products they were shipping. So all of us that bought those products, whether we were in Monroe County or not, were paying a higher cost. And that was going on all over the state. Uh, the other part that added to the economic cost of doing nothing, or the if we would not done, dealt with this last fall, is attracting businesses to the state. Um, you know, I can tell you that when companies look at Pennsylvania, they reach out to the governor's office, they generally will see DCD uh, Secretary Walker. And then Secretary Walker will tell me one of the first people they ask to speak to is me. They want to know the condition of our roads and bridges. They want to know about our mass transit and urban areas. And we compete. Yeah. We compete with other states in the Mid-Atlantic region for businesses. And if we don't have adequate infrastructure, they will go to another state. So you're right, the, uh, the issue your trucking company described Describe the cost of inaction to everyone, not to mention the wear and tear in your vehicles as we don't, aren't able to keep up with the roadway surfaces. You know, it's, it's funny that even the tolling of I-80 actually hurt us. We had roadway was there and roadway merged with yellow and now they're making a decision of where they're going to grow. And of course they pulled out because of the possible tolling of I-80. This is before you were there, so I just want you to know. But so now, it's, it's, it, now it becomes another issue and if we don't have the infrastructure in place, we're not going to attract these companies. And uh, we still have part of that roadway has now been taken over by, uh, by Walmart, and they have their distribution center there, and, um, and we're hopeful to attract more to it. But to me, I, when I said it on the House floor, I said, this is a very difficult vote for me. 
I'm really concerned because of the, you know, the, the, the cost that it's going to put back onto the, onto the uh, individual family at this time. But however, when you weigh what you just said, you're paying for it now because these trucks are doing bypasses by, because of these posted roads. And on top of that, how would you expect if a truck goes over one of these bridges at night and, and creates really some major problems on that bridge and here comes a school bus the next day or a vehicle the next day and that br bridge collapses. I didn't want to have that on my conscience and not just in my county but across the state. Well, I, again, you know, back to my first comments, we all collectively own these assets. It's yeah. not as though they're yours yeah. or they're mine. They're owned by the citizens of the Commonwealth. Yeah. And either we take care of them, like you take care of your own car and your own assets, your home, or you don't take care of it. And as you said, it's, it's a public safety issue. It's an economic issue. In the end, I think the most important thing, uh, you know, I have children. We all have families. We have children. If we don't take care of it now, all we're doing is passing it on to the next generation. And every year we pass it on, the cost gets higher. So, you know, our, my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation built the interstate system. They paid for it. It needs to be rebuilt now. Yeah. So Interstate 80, we're going to widen and reconstruct a, a six-mile segment of Interstate 80 because of this bill that we otherwise would not have done. Yeah. So you think about the safety improvements, the congestion relief, and just the better surface of the roadway that's going to occur because of this. And had we not done it, we wouldn't have been able to do the project. So I think clearly the, this is an investment, but it's an investment by this generation to make up for the investment that was made by the last generation and for the next generation. That's well said. And I looked at, uh, we, was it one at eight and a half cents or something, and from Bartonsville to Scott Run in my district, there's a 12 cents variation in, ga in gas prices. So it really, if you shop around, you're going to force people to re lower their price. So it really doesn't become that number that people are kind of afraid of. And in, s in some cases, um, I've gone to other states and I traveled and I visited with a lower gas tax and they're just as expensive as we are today here. So I'm wondering if somebody's playing around with a gas price or what, but I can tell you that um, this winter, our roads are taking a tremendous beating. And if you didn't have the dollars to fix it, what conditions would we be looking at next year? Oh, it'd be awful. I mean, you know, I'll tell you what, right now, everybody's probably going to tell you and tell me about the pothole issues. Right. And, and you just wait till it gets warm. I mean, right now what happens, we've had an extended cold weather, one of the more severe winters we've had in a long time. So the freeze is building up and the pavement's heaving. What are you seeing on the surface? You're seeing, as I've said many times to you and others, as we talked about this issue, you're seeing the result of many years of overlaying bad pavement. And the poor, thin overlays are starting to buckle and break. So had, if we weren't able to follow Act 89 and actually rebuild these pavements and do a more thorough reconstruction, we'd be back doing these surface overlays, and they pop off. And the reason they pop off, the pavement underneath is 40 and 50 years old. When the weather gets warm, I'll just warn the uh, folks that are watching this, when we see the spring temperatures, you're going to see more of that. This, this severe winter has had a big effect on our roadways. But we'll be out there. We'll be out this spring. Construction season starts. You'll see a heck of a lot of work from our crews around the state in your district working on resurfacing and improving the pavement surfaces that we otherwise would not have been able to do. Yeah, and a lot of people uh, also, I tell them, you know, liquid fuels, it's what the state gives to the local municipalities to maintain roads, would have been reduced this year because of the lack of money. And if you don't, if you have reduced liquid fuels, you're going to feel it on the other side because the, the, prop, the property owner is going to feel it because the municipality is going to have to find that revenue to offset what they didn't receive from the state. And in our case, it was a significant amount of money. And with this bill, the 20 municipalities in Monroe County get $3 million mm -hmm. more. That's $3 million that would have come from property taxes. That's right. It would have come from property taxes. So now it's more of a user system. It's if you're using the roads, it's coming from the, from the gas tax versus from your, from your local property taxes. That's right. And, and I think that the foundation in Pennsylvania, I think, has been almost unique in this regard nationally. And I've served on finance committees in other states, and we've looked at different methods of how you might finance infrastructure. Pennsylvania has a stronger reliance on the fuel tax than registration, license fees, and other things. And if you think about it, what could be more fair than that? If you have a low cost of your registration and license fee, which we do, we have one of the lowest registrations and license fees in the country. So your access to the system, if you will, is a very low charge. Right. Then the more you drive, the more you use the fuel, the more you use the system, the more you pay, including out-of-state truckers, meaning whether they buy their fuel in Pennsylvania or not, they get a portion by the miles they drive. Being the Keystone State, we have a heck of a lot of pass-through truck traffic. And by putting most of our revenue coming out of the fuel sources, we make sure we get the revenue from those truckers that are using our system as they pass through. 
if we did what other states did, which was raise the registration and license fees to two, three, four times what they are today, then you're paying more just Pennsylvania residents, not the out-of-state folks, just Pennsylvania residents are paying more just to have access to the system, regardless of how much they drive. So I think our model is one of the best in the country, it's and good. it's fair. Yeah, I, I, especially with the senior program also, if you're, um, uh, you, you can get the reduced registration, right. which no other state does, I don't think. Um, it's, it, it, you're, you're right on. I, if it's the user is paying for it, and um, we're going to put this chart on, on the screen, and we're going to talk about it because I, I have seven states right alongside of us, mm -hmm. and I'm comparing exactly what you just mentioned, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, New York, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. The folks at home will be able to see it up on the screen. And, and of course, New Jersey's got the lowest tax, right? Four, Fourteen and a half cents. And uh, the federal gas tax is um, 18, 18 point four. If you drive 12,000 miles, um, the average, we'll use an, out, an average driver 12,000. So you can say 24, 36, you can multiply it out as much as you want back at home. Average gallons are 24.3, the vehicle. Um, it'll cost you, you'll use about 493.8 gallons. And the cost per driver with the gasoline will be $162.47 in New Jersey. Now, New Jersey's um, driver's license is 5.5. Their registration is $84. They get you big on the registration. But New Jersey has a tremendous amount of toll roads. They do. And their tolls, if you drove those 12,000 miles, would be 216.6. So when you add that to the gasoline cost, the gasoline taxes, and the registration and everything else, the yearly cost of driving in, in New Jersey is $468.56. The miles of highways in New Jersey that they take, collect these for, is for 2,318 miles. 2,318 miles, folks. All their local roads, that's property tax that's paying for it. So they're not, they're not maintaining a tremendous amount of roads. Now look at Pennsylvania. But you can see all the screens. Pennsylvania is number six. I'm not going to go over all of them, but in Pennsylvania, we have, well, we have the highest sales on, on the gas tax. However... As you go across the bar, the cost of driving will be 291, but then look at the driver's license. The registration's $36. Tolls, very little, just on the turnpike, 88.4. Yearly cost per driver, 423.48. We're actually less than New Jersey by $45 if on average driver 12,000 miles. But then look at the miles of roads in Pennsylvania, 39,891 miles of roads. That's the difference, folks. We have more. How many? There's only two other states, I yeah. believe. And we have as much as the whole New England states combined yeah. in terms of our 40,000 miles of state-owned yeah. system. And you know, even if folks in your district don't drive on those, they get products delivered on these roads. Yeah. The farm products come to you. So yeah. we're all responsible for the whole network. Yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, when you look at this chart, and the viewers can look at it at home, um, there's a lot of methods of how you might finance transportation. And while New Jersey keeps their gas tax low, they have very high tolls on an extensive network of toll roads. Um, so if you drive in New Jersey, you're more apt to be on a toll road than you are in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's just different. It's a little bit of apples and oranges that mm -hmm. often gets lost in the mix when people talk just about the gas tax. Mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing I think about this is, is that if you take all those costs, the yearly costs, and divide it by 12, you're looking at under $40 a month for your highway bill. Mm -hmm. Now think about your cable TV, your cell phone, you know, other yeah. other utilities. And yeah. in essence, we're a utility company. Yeah. And I, I don't. There aren't many people out there. I frequently ask this when I'm in a room. How many people have cell phones that are under fifty dollars a month? Maybe a few hands go up. Under seventy-five, a few more. Under a hundred, a few more. Most of them are in the seventy-five to one hundred twenty-five dollars a month. That's a good point. For their cell phone. It's a good point. And I know people think I can't live without my cell phone. Yeah. And probably today it might be difficult. <laughs> but could you live without the highway system and your highway bill? is you know less than forty dollars a month for yeah. the whole highway system yeah. and if, if we charged on a monthly basis and you compare that monthly cost to other monthly cost for utilities that you pay for we're probably the lowest yeah. of all the ones you use and you know, you know folks back at home and i think I, i've said this one if i had the opportunity to meet with people blacktop in the last 10 years has gone up 250 percent mm -hmm. and that's to pave a road 250 percent um the steel is 183%. It's just, well, that's been all over the place. Yeah. It was skyrocketing for a while when the demand was up yeah. in China. But yeah. generally speaking, 
You know, the last time the legislature changed the rate of uh, any of these fees or, or rates was 1997. Mm -hmm. So you go back and, and think, okay, if we've gone by in, in the last, you know, 17 years, have costs gone up? Well, of course they have. Our costs have gone up. And the reality is our revenue has gone down because yeah. everyone's driving more fuel-efficient vehicles. Yeah. So if anything, until Act 89 went in place, everyone's monthly bill was going down because the rates were all the same. Yeah. But they were driving more fuel-efficient vehicles while our costs were going up. Yes, yeah, so I, I saw a number. It was like a 17, 17 gallons per mile back 10 years ago with the average. Right. And today it's more like 27 miles per gallon. And it's going up because it's of the federal going, mandates. It's only, it's only going to go up. And our tax is not on the price. It's on the gallon, folks. I think a lot of people see the price and think the sales tax created it. Right. You know what I mean? It's a sales tax. It's not like a sales tax. It's, it's per gallon. So that's where, where some folks back home get um, don't, don't re realize it. Well, I think people thought when the price of gas went up to four bucks a gallon a few years ago that we were somehow making more money. Exactly. Uh, and that's exactly. not the case. It was the same exactly. regardless. And uh, Actually, we were losing money. Right. Well, because what happens is people are being more, driving more efficient, driving less. Right. And actually, that hurt us even, right, <laughs> in the opposite Sure, way. it drove demand down. I mean, you know, they track at the federal level vehicle miles traveled on an annual basis. Mm -hmm. And I think it was when the price, uh, when the hurricane hit New Orleans and the price of skyrocketed, it was the first time in the history of tracking total vehicle miles traveled that it went down. So not only the combination of more fuel efficient vehicles, but then less driving, in the end that means less revenue and yet the same 40,000 miles a road to maintain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a combination of, of, you know, the need for Act 89, the need for what you and the other legislature, legislators voted for and the governor signed was very clear. It was ignoring the problem just made it cost more, ignoring the problem. Uh, had the side effects of the posted bridges, the poor roadway surfaces, the economic competitiveness, and it wasn't going to go away. Yeah. Uh, you and I had that conversation. Yeah. It's not as though if we didn't deal with this this year, we could say, well, we're just not going to deal with it for yeah. five years. Two years from now, it would be the same problem, just a bigger number. Yeah, and, and the, it, it, the time was here. You know, in 611 in my district, I know it's going to have a total redo do from um, the Scott Run exit up to Swiftwater. It's going to be widened. It, today, if you were driving 611 uh, and a police officer was behind you, you would swear that the driver was drunk because this is how you're driving. That, that's how bad it is. And we, we wouldn't have the money. And now we're going to, that whole area there, would, next year, I believe, we're going to start to rip it. There's going to be a brand new base and it's going to be a brand new roadway with the walking paths alongside that roadway where we would, that would have been consistently patched like we just patched it this year. Right. And, um, but at some point, there's nothing to patch because that stuff keeps popping up. It's like, uh, you know, I've likened it to putting paint on bad wood. We've all done it, right? You're, you're trying to extend the life of the wood and you put paint on it and it looks good for a little while. Yeah. And then the holes start showing back through. And, and that's what happens with these overlays on top of 40 and 50 year old pavement. They just, each time we put it down, it lasts a shorter period of time. And people yeah. will say, Penn, that was just out here. Yeah, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? You were just here four years ago. Yeah. But the reality is we put down an overlay on a really old pavement. And so the, the subsurface, that old pavement, just buckles up through. And it basically, we're just buying time, and we finally will have the dollars to get this right. You know, I had people walk into my office with a flat tire. They went over a pothole, and they're really complaining. They want me to fix it. PennDOT's responsible. And I try to tell them, I said, look, you know, we need to do something with our roads. And, and, and would you rather have a busted rim or pay the, the $40? Honestly, think about that. Forty dollars over that cost, and it's forty dollars. It didn't go up forty dollars, folks. Went up like two. In the in the fifth year, what is it about two two fifty three dollars? If, if you look at the purse, the average. You used the yeah. statistics earlier. Yeah. Somebody drives twelve thousand miles yeah. a year. By the time this is fully implemented, five years from now, if mm -hmm. if the cost is fully passed on from the wholesalers to the pump, which yeah. is as which, you said. <laughs> It's a pretty murky situation exactly. when you look at the 15 cents a gallon exactly. spread uh, in, in areas right yeah. now. If it's fully passed on five years from now, mm -hmm. the average cost of that motors might be 250 a week. $2.50 a week. Less than a cup of coffee, and uh, in exchange, you get better roads. Better roads, safer roads, and um, you, th those chances of hitting that pothole aren't going to be there. And I, I, in Monroe especially, I think we had the most structurally deficient bridges because we had the most roads. It woke me up one day when I'm starting to see these. And I actually, I want you to know, I went underneath some of them. I'm saying, I, I said, are they playing around with us? And I went, I see the exposed steel. You could see the loose concrete. And I'm saying, wow. And I talked about it on the House floor. You just can't continue to, to do what we're doing and just kicking the, the can forward. It's almost like we did with the pensions. <laughs> the at pension. some point, you get a bill that's, yeah. I mean, we've all faced it at home. 
where you got it at expense that you know is coming, and the longer you put it off, someone is collecting interest on you. Yeah. And in this case, we're putting interest on ourselves by not dealing with it. Yeah. The um, we talked about six eleven, another safety project that um, we're looking at is the the um, concrete divider on thirty three. Mm -hmm. We did put. Um, uh, the metal divider there, but you know, every, it seems that every other day, and it doesn't really do the job. It, 33 has become a highly traveled roadway it since it was connected to 78 because it makes, uh, it's almost like an hour out of Newark now. Mm -hmm. And you could see the growth in Northampton County because of the connector. And uh, we've had a tremendous amount of fatalities there, and I did ask to have the concrete divider there, mm -hmm. and it's going to happen. So that concrete divider on 33 will ex be extended down to Wind Gap, where there is one at, from the Wind Gap overpass, there's one that takes you even further down. And then below that, it's much more wider. It's not as, it's not as dangerous as it is through that, sail that Salisburg area there. So that's another s huge safety improvement. Um, the other parts of this bill, and I, this is a piece that I moved some prevailing wage bills out of my committee because I knew that this bill was going to be discussed. And remember, Senate Bill 1 did not have mm -hmm. prevailing wage in it, nor did the first uh, amendment that we were preparing here. And it's, prevailing wage has been the same since 1961, $25,000. Um, we were able to move it to 100000 which will give the municipal. This helps you back home, property taxes, because the municipality, when they go and bid out a road, anything under anything over twenty-five thousand, they had to bid it out prevailing wage, which could add up to twenty, twenty-five percent to a project. Now we've raised it up to a hundred thousand, which is a pretty good chunk that you can almost say if you're going to do a road, you know, a couple of blocks in a borough, whatever, that that municipality is going to save about twenty-five thousand dollars when they on their property taxes, because that's where it would come from. Well, you're right. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, there hasn't been any movement since 1961, and, and it's almost incomprehensible yeah. if there hasn't been. But the, several of the unions came along, and the board governor called them in said, look, we've all got to move a little bit. We all want this to happen. There will be union jobs created by this. Um, there's, you know, I was at, the governor said, look, I was at a $1.8 billion number. The Senate's at 2.5. We're probably not going to be where they want to be. They're going to have to move. The House is probably going to move a little higher than where they were. The unions are going to have to participate in this. We're all going to have to compromise if we want to get a bill on the desk. The moving that threshold from 25,000 to 100,000, as you suggest, is really an issue for local government. We only had, you know, 13 projects that were under 100,000, so it's not yeah. an issue for us. Yeah. But on the local level, there's a lot of projects that 60% uh, of the projects, we ran the numbers, 60% statewide were under 100,000. Over 25, but under 100. And, you know, you couple that with the 250 million of additional liquid fuels money that's going to go to local government by year five, the bridge bundling which will save costs for local governments on bridge construction and design. The traffic signal money, mm -hmm. starting with $10 million in year one, building to $40 million in year five, where locals can apply for up to 50% of the cost to upgrade signals. Uh, significant local government bill. And all of that would have come from property taxes. And you see, see uh, to me, that's so important because you, you see it at the pump, but you would have seen it in your property tax bill. And one thing we have back home is high property taxes. I'm not proud of it. We do have high property taxes. It's, it's mo mostly on the school side, mm -hmm. but on the local side, we're actually helping the local municipalities keep their taxes lower by doing this. And each and every one of them that I spoke to was so pleased because it, they, were, they were being strangled. They were pushing projects off. Uh, or they weren't doing projects because of the prevailing wage costs and everything else. So now well, it, 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 it really will be the user paying for it and not the property owner. That's right. And, and the, uh, you know, the local government owns 77,000 miles, right? I told you we own about 40,000. Mm -hmm. They own almost twice the amount of roadway network that we do. Wow. And uh, the local officials banded together, and I know wrote you a letter and every other legislator yeah. saying, we support Act 89 because our only alternative, if you don't take care of this, is to raise property taxes. It's the only other source of revenue that they have. So it's a, it's a good bill for the long-term economic health of this, this commonwealth. It's a great bill for local government. As we're talking, we're, you know, I, back home they're seeing some of these uh, bridges that we've been talking about um, and how bad they've deteriorated. And it's not that we just, the money hasn't been there. And just remember, for the ones that you see, there's some out there even worse. We have a, bill, a, a, a bridge being done right now in Bartonsville that I saw, I've been underneath it, I gotta tell you, when I, I'd hit the gas to 
to get past <laughs> it. And I really, and to, now it's being done, and uh, it's going to be, uh, hopefully, we're going to get it um, moved fairly quickly, and hopefully by the time people are watching this, that bridge should be completed. Uh, we're looking at a June time frame or so, but that bridge has a, a, a tremendous amount of um, traffic that flows over it. And could you imagine having to post that on 611? That would have been disastrous. It would have been for the economy and, and for trucking concerns. And then the alternate routes would have been a problem yeah. for the people who weren't accustomed to that traffic. But, you know, for all your, your viewers that are watching this, they can go to our website and click on the Decade of Investment button. And you can look at all the projects that are going to happen in your district. They can sort it by your district, by county. Uh, you can click on the project, see what it's going to cost, what the lengths and limits are, bridge, roadway project. Uh, so go to the PennDOT website, click on Decade of Investment, you can see all the projects we plan to do in the next decade, and it's a huge list. I'll tell you, they can go to mine and get the Monroe County ones, mm -hmm. and it's $575 million. That otherwise would not have occurred. That uh, otherwise would not have occurred that's coming back to Monroe. You know, we, I always say we get shafted with the, with the uh, school district dollars because of the growth, but uh, we did okay with this. We did, we did very well, $575 million. And you go to my website, and, re and the same, uh, right in the center of the screen, up at the top, record of investments, uh, the, uh, at the very top of the screen, hit that, and then scroll all the way down, and you will see all of the projects listed. Um, the road repaves, the bridge, the bridge work replacements, and all, all of them will be addressed. And you'll also see what we were talking about, what's been on the screen a little bit earlier, the average cost per driver uh, in each one of the states nearby to us and, and compares us to other, other states. So for, in that matter, we've done a pretty good job um, in holding down the cost of the registrations, holding down the cost. There's one state, Ohio's uh, driver's license, $23.80. A year. A year. $23.80 a year. But you know, know, I'll tell you, they're represented. If you look at this list, uh, Maryland recently passed a transportation funding plan. Delaware, the governor's come out in support of a 10 cent gas tax. Everybody's dealing with the same issue, mm -hmm. largely because the federal government hasn't solved this problem for mm -hmm. a long time. So the states are faced with the issue of finding the revenue sources. So Virginia did a transportation plan, mm -hmm. Maryland did, Ohio did, Delaware is considering one. You're going to see this happening everywhere. This state was actually in front. I'm getting calls now to get to go speak to other states to talk about how we did it. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been viewed as a model nationally, mm -hmm. and it's something we're being recognized as a leader for dealing with a problem that everyone is facing. And again, it's not an easy, it's not an easy vote to say, hey, we're going to do this. But, it, but when you think about, think about the conditions of our roads, it was the right vote. And I tell people all the time, it's so easy to say, well, I'm not going to vote to raise it. But if you don't look at protecting people and, moving the, move, and getting our infrastructure up to snuff, Safety to me has been the number one issue, and I thank you for for being a leader. And I know that uh, it, you've been talking about this from day one because you, when you went and stepped into this office, you know you didn't have the money to make the improvements. That's right. And and you're you're one of those guys that you want to see you want to see something happen, and this is going to give you that opportunity to to make Pennsylvania shine. You got thirty nine thousand miles of roads and all these bridges, and the next five or six years, the investment is going to be immense. It is. It is, and I thank you for having me on the show to discuss it. No, my, my pleasure, and, I, and thank you for giving me the time to uh, stop by and say hello. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today's program. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. If you need any assistance with any state government matter, feel free to contact me at my local office. The address and number will be shown in a moment. Thanks for watching, and see you next time on Legislative Report.